Okay guys, so we're now inside. Um, it's a bit cool outside today. So we've taken the board out and um, brought it into the kitchen. So what are you gonna need to do this job? First, an understanding why, because if you're gonna be doing it in the kitchen like I am, um, I've just put down a towel just to protect the kitchen bench. But uh, if you're in your workshop, you're okay on your normal bench. Um, as you can see, fair bit of water has got in there. It could, bit more than I expected. I expected some dust from some dusty roads, but um, not as much water uh, in there. I didn't expect so much water in there. So um, need to now see what we've got to do to pull this apart and get it all clean. But first job, what I want to do is I'm just going to mark before I pull these relays. I'm just going to put a bit of tape on each one and um, mark their position take a photo of it so that at least I get the relays back in the same place. I'm the fuses, I'm not so worried about. I am going to pull them out. I'll test each one, make sure that they're all good. Um, and if need be, I'll replace those. So now we'll just start taking these out and just having a quick look at each one just to see if there's any particular one um, that looks like it needs more attention so I can check on the board on that. Okay, so that's all of those out. Um, I'll take a picture, a close-up picture of this for you and uh, insert it into the video. But um, you can see the board's quite dirty, so. So now we've got all those pulled. Um, I won't bore you with going through them. I'll show you some pictures of what they look like before cleaning up. Um, the next part is to, to get cleaning on this board, so um, also the cover, you can see there's a, um, there's a bit of mud in there as well and needs a bit of a clean up, so I think I'm just going to stick that in the dishwasher. Um, we'll see how that goes, see if I get how much trouble I get in. Alright. Okay, so those with a keen eye, or sat there and watched it, didn't get you the coffee. Um, I pulled out all the fuses and just did a visual inspection on each one, just holding it up to the light. Um, you may have noticed I stopped a couple of times and wrote something on a bit of tape and put it around the fuses. And that's because I found 16 and 53 um, were both blown. And I haven't noticed anything not working, so... Um, one of them is the rear wiper, which I can't recall ever using. Um, the other one is a um, power switch for the heater. So I'm um, not sure if that's the heated seats, uh, because I think as of yesterday, the heater was working fine. So, um, but that warrants a little bit further investigation, and that's why I just noted on those two what the location was that they were blown in. So that's the now the fuse box stripped down to uh, nothing on it. Now the next part is to um, pull this apart, a bit of disassembly and see what we've got inside because if it looks that bad externally, I'm tipping it's not gonna look great inside. And um, you know, there are a little bit of corrosion, evidence of corrosion on some of the terminals there, um, but we'll get it all pulled apart and, um, and clean it up. And, see if it's salvageable or if we're looking for a new fuse box. Okay, so the next step for me is to um, pull this apart. And so we we'll start with, if we turn it over completely, I notice there's these little tabs here that need to be pulled out um, just to allow the, um, 
the case to spread enough for, to pull this base out. So basically it's just getting into, you'll see these little sections here um, where you just need to put a screwdriver in and just spread it and then you can twist upwards and release that tab. So I've gone around and done that already all the way through and slowly you can just work that up all the way around and sometimes it's good to start with you know get a corner and once you've got a corner going you can grab you know screwdriver and sit it in there just to hold it up where you start working on the next corner and just work your way around slowly and you'll get that released so on doing that there's quite a bit more damage um, evident once pulled that up so um, I would have not thought that um, I would have had that in there but um, there's been quite a bit of um, dust fine dust go into there and then mixed with a little bit of water so what I will do um, is take a bit of a close-up there so we can get a better shot to show you what um, what we're dealing with. So far I think it can still be cleaned up um, but we'll get a, a better shot for you so that you can get a close up on it. So there are a couple of parts that um, I'm concerned with where you can physically see the, um, the board's been shorting. So that might point to a few problems that we've been having. Um, I'll have to have a look at a diagram and see exactly what those uh, two circuits are that have been uh, touching, but yeah, it's not a, a good thing to have um, circuits crossing over. So that's part one to remove that piece. And again, I think that might go into the dishwasher. So we'll put that under there. Okay, so the next step, we've got that side out. Um, I undid the, uh, the fusible link here before off these two terminals. Now that terminal, this one just sits there loose so it just picks up the power jumping off of this terminal here. Um, that side actually has the power, is, is providing the power. So there's, there's terminals for the auxiliary pieces that you might want to add at any point in time. Now, I think we should just be able to pull this board out, but I just want to be very careful in doing that. And we'll see if we can just spread that case a little. This is going to come out in several pieces, so it's really just sitting in there, but um, I don't want to um, put too much pressure on that. So, Oh, and now we have some trouble. So it looks to me, um, it's just a bit of corrosion, but again, I'll do a close up for you and then I'll um, stick it into the, the video. So give me a moment. Okay, so I've just inserted those close-ups and um, as you can see there's quite a bit of damage and whether or not this board is going to be salvageable, um, yeah, for this exercise we may clean it up anyway, but um, I'm fairly comfortable in saying that the best thing to do with a board in this condition is to replace it. Um, this comes off in several layers, so you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, different layers um, that we can pull this apart and I'm guessing right now I'm going to call it and say that each level is going to have its own degree of corrosion and it's not too bad but it's still not great. So again, I'm going to take some photos and I'll insert them here. So that 
that's another layer that doesn't look too good. So um, we might just for curiosity now at this point, have a look at the next layer. Again, we're just easing these apart. Each layer has its own set of pins and um, then its own circuit board. And, you know, they're not looking too good. Well, a couple more layers to go. Um, I would have liked to have said that it's getting better the deeper we go, but um, unfortunately, it's not. It, um, it's got quite a bit of the water ingress all the way through, right down to the last board. So, can clean it up. I mean, look, you know, if you're on a really, really tight budget um, and the car doesn't go remote, so reliability is not a, a big concern, um, you could clean this board up, uh, take a lot of cleaning, um, and possibly be okay. But, um, I think what I'll be doing is going and getting a new ball. I'm back. Um, look, I've had a thought. This uh, I'm going to order a new board just because I want the reliability. But seeing as this board's here, um, I want to try a couple of things. So first thing I just tried then was some al uh, some alcohol. So spray the alcohol on, then the old toothbrush, give it a scrub. But what I've noticed is on these boards, you have all these plates and that debris and water and everything else has washed in under those plates. So no amount of scrubbing or anything is gonna get that out. If I had, um, you know, my wife's got a, a little machine there that um, washes her rings. So yeah, if that was big enough to get this into that would be that would be good you could perhaps send it off to be ultrasonically cleaned um, you yeah, know that might be an option um, cost wise not sure what that would cost but what I'm going to try seems as um, I'm replacing it anyway is I'm going to put it in the dishwasher and um, after I pull it out of the dishwasher um, I thought about letting it dry naturally, but um, we've got one of those clothes dryers that pulls the water out, um, so it basically dehumidifies the clothes. Um, so if I can get a tray to sit in there where I can get these so they're not spinning, um, I might give that a go and dry it out and then um, see what results we get. Okay, so I can't believe I'm doing this and um, I'm not sure what I'm going to get in more trouble for for using the dishwasher for this purpose or for not normally using the dishwasher and pretending I don't know how to use it. So um, I'm going to put these in the top and hopefully they don't move around too much. And then plate racks seem to be perfect for these boards. So. Carefully there. The next one over here. Yes. I don't know if any of you guys have done car parts in um, dishwashers, but they are best. Bring up a set of heads like new, and um, hopefully. Bring these up on here as well. So I'm still in pretty bad condition. I've got nothing to lose here because um, I think unless I wanted to put in a few hundred hours of pulling each part, each piece apart completely, uh, which I'm not prepared to do. Um, yeah, there was no saving that. So I'm going to put that in. Um, I'm going to use regular dishwashing. 
fluid. All right, I found it. Like I said, don't normally use it. Um, I'm just going to use a standard one here. Again, got nothing to lose. I'm just really curious to see how well it gets in there and cleans it. And then, who knows? We'll see what the result is. Close that up. I think I'll put that onto um, rinse and hold quick. Oh, I'd say pots would be the go. And we'll start that. See what happens. And to get myself into even more trouble, I thought I'd try all these little bits and pieces in the wife's um, ultrasonic cleaner that's normally used for jewelry. Too bad I couldn't fit the boards in there. That would have been good. Well, you wouldn't believe it, but um, I pulled that out of the dishwasher and it had a couple of runs. So the first run still a little bit dirt left, so I did another one. And they've come up a lot better than what I thought they would. Um, so much so though, I've, I've done a close up and I'll do a before and after shot of this. So then what I've decided to do is um, I hit it with some WD-40. And what that's going to do is just um, get rid of any of that last little bit of corrosion. Um, then after that, I've cleaned it with the uh, isopropyl, uh, isopropyl alcohol, um, just to make sure that there's no residue left from the WD-40. Um, then I think, the last thing we're going to do is just apply some silicon spray. Um, this is a high temp one and um, also has corrosion protection in it. So it's a um, high performance lubricant with PTFE. Um, so that's going to give us some corrosion protection and I'm going to do a layer of that in each one um, as I assemble it just to try and stave off that corrosion. So I'm gonna check this, I'm gonna run it now rather than buying a new one and I'm gonna check it in a few months um, and just see if any of, any of the corrosion has come back because uh, I'm quite surprised how, how it's come up. I had thought about going further with it, um, getting it professionally cleaned, but it's come up so good, I don't think I'm gonna worry about it. Like I say, I'm just gonna Put that together slowly um, one board at a time so that's the first board there and that's going to go down into here and you've got to make sure you're not forcing it because there are pins everywhere so some of those pins with the cleaning might have moved a little bit so i don't want to force anything in just want to take my time and get it to um, seed in by itself and that seems to have seated pretty good. So that's the first layer. So not to bore you, um, I won't go through the whole process of putting it together. I just thought I'd stop that there for a second because I noticed um, there's a bit of corrosion on a couple of these terminals that I just want to really make sure that are gone. So I'm just going to use, again, a white snail file because it's perfect for light sanding. And I'm just going to clean up those terminals just a little bit more make sure I'm happy with them. That works great again. So there's really just a matter of lining up the pins and uh, letting it sort of find its own way rather than trying to force it with the pins. They tend to slip in pretty easy. So that's another one down. So two more to go. I'll clean those up and pop it back together and then I'll come back to you. Okay guys, so I'm back. Um, that's the last one in, all cleaned up, um, protected with the silicon as I said. 
just got to put this cover back on. But before I do that, I have to go to my wife's ultrasonic cleaning tray where I um, used it to clean all the smaller components. May as well, have. I've used her dishwasher, I've used her nail file, I've used her hair dryer even to, um, to speed things up a little bit. So I may as well use everything. All right, so we'll put those into place and this cap goes on. There's two uh, lugs on the ends here, that, or guides that help you guide that on. And again, you still have to be careful. We don't want to crush any pins. You have to have it around the right way, of course. Makes it easier. But once you get those two lined up and the pins all lined up, then we can just Clip that into place all the way around. And there is one refurbed um, fuse box. So I know I said earlier in the video that um, I wouldn't run it, I'd get a new one. But it has come up so good that I want to run it and um, I'll check on it from time to time but um, see how well the silicon helps protect from that corrosion coming back um, and see if it's any good because I did have a quick look online and um, I'm not happy with it with what it will cost me to buy a new one so I'm quite happy with that now one last thing I did say that I'd be checking the relays and I'd show you a simple way the way you didn't really need any tools to do that um, what you do need is a 9 volt battery um, on all relays you're going to have your layout there and what we're looking for is uh, pins 86 and 87 and when we know what they are we can take the battery simply and cross 86 and 87 together and I don't know if you can hear that, but there we have a working relay. You can hear that click. So do that on another one. And I've already done all these, but just to show you another one. And hopefully you can hear that click. So all the relays work all right. Now, of course, relays get hot and fail and, you know, you can get them load tested. Um, you can replace them, but um, for this purpose, I'm now looking to do it as economically as I can. So tomorrow I'll pop this back in the car and uh, hopefully everything fires up and um, don't have any problems. And uh, I'll catch you guys then.